Chapter 18. Giver? Jonas asks the next afternoon. Do you ever think about release? Do you mean my own release, or just the general topic of release? Both, I guess. I apologize. I mean, I should have been more precise, but I don't know exactly what I meant. Sit back up. No need to lie down while we're talking, Jonas. Jonas, who had already been stretched out on the bed when the question came to his mind, sat up. I guess I do think about it occasionally, Giver said. I think about my own release when I'm in an awful lot of pain. I wish I could put in a request for it sometimes, but I'm not permitted to do that until the new receiver is trained. Me, Jonas said in a dejected voice. He was not looking forward to the end of the training, when he would become the new receiver. It was clear to him what a terribly difficult and lonely life it was, despite the honor. I can't request release either, Jonas pointed out. It was in my rules. The giver laughed harshly. I know that. They hammered out those rules after the failure ten years ago. Jonas had heard again and again, now reference to the previous failure, but he still did not know what had happened ten years before. Give her, he said. Tell me what happened, please. The giver shrugged. On the surface, it was quite simple. A receiver to be was selected the way you were. The selection went smoothly enough. The ceremony was held and the selection was made. The crowd cheered as they did for you. The new receiver was puzzled and a little frightened, as you were. My parents told me it was a female. The giver nodded. Jonas thought of his favorite female, Fiona, and shivered. He wouldn't want his gentle friend to suffer the way he had, taking on the memories. What was she like? He asked the giver. The giver looked sad, thinking about it. She was a remarkable young woman, very self-possessed and serene, intelligent, eager to learn. He shook his head and drew a deep breath. You know, Jonas, when she came to me in this room, when she presented herself to begin her training, Jonas interrupted him with a question. Can you tell me her name? My parents said that it wasn't to be spoken again in the community, but couldn't you say it just to me? The giver hesitated painfully, as if saying the name aloud might be excruciating. Her name was Rosemary, he told Jonas, finally. Rosemary, I like that name. The giver went on. When she came to me for the first time, she sat there in the chair where you sat on your first day. She was eager and excited and a little scared. We talked. I tried to explain things as well as I could. The way you did to me. The giver chuckled ruefully. The explanations are difficult. The whole thing is so beyond one's experience, but I tried. And she listened carefully. Her eyes were very luminous, I remember. He looked up suddenly. Jonas, I gave you a memory that I told you was my favorite. I still have a shred of it left, the room, with the family and grandparents. Jonas nodded. Of course he remembered. Yes, he said. It had that wonderful feeling with it. You told me it was love. You can understand, then, that that's what I felt for Rosemary, the giver explained. I loved her. I feel it for you, too, he added. What happened to her? Jonas asked. Her training began. She received well, as you do. She was so enthusiastic, so delighted to experience new things. I remember her laughter. His voice faltered and trilled off. What happened? Jonas asked again, after a moment. Please, tell me. The giver closed his eyes. It broke my heart, Jonas, to transfer pain to her, but it was my job. It was what I had to do, the way I've done it to you. The room was silent. Jonas waited. Finally, the giver continued. Five weeks, that was all. I gave her happy memories, a ride on the merry-go-round, a kitten to play with, a picnic. Sometimes I chose one just because I knew it would make her laugh, and I so treasured the sound of that laughter in this room that had always been so silent. But she was like you, Jonas. She wanted to experience everything. She knew that it was her responsibility, and so she asked me for more difficult memories. Jonas held his breath for a moment. You didn't give her war, did you? Not after just five weeks. The giver shook his head and sighed. No, and I didn't give her physical pain. But I gave her loneliness, and I gave her loss. I transferred a memory of a child taken from its parents. That was the first one. She appeared stunned at its end. Jonas swallowed. Rosemary and her laughter had begun to seem real to him, and he pictured her looking up from the bad memories, shocked. The giver continued. I backed off, gave her more little delights, but everything changed when she knew about pain. I could see it in her eyes. 
She wasn't brave enough, Juna suggested. The giver didn't respond to the question. She insisted that I continue, that I not spare her. She said it was her duty. And I knew, of course, that she was correct. I couldn't bring myself to inflict physical pain on her, but I gave her anguish of many kinds. Poverty and hunger and terror. I had to, Jonas. It was my job. And she had been chosen. The giver looked at him imploringly. Jonas stroked his hand. Finally, one afternoon, we finished for the day. It had been a hard session. I tried to finish, as I do with you, by transferring something happy and cheerful. But the times of laughter were gone by then. She stood up very silently, frowning as if she were making a decision. Then she came over to me and put her arms around me. She kissed my cheek. As Jonas watched, the giver stroked his own cheek, recalling the touch of Rosemary's lips ten years before. She left here that day, left this room, and did not go back to her dwelling. I was notified by the speaker that she had gone directly to Chief Elder and asked to be released. But it's against the rules. The receiver in training can't apply for... It's in your rules, Jonas, but it wasn't in hers. She asked for release, and they had to give it to her. I never saw her again. So that was the failure, Jonas thought. It was obvious that it sat in the giver very deeply, but it didn't seem such a terrible thing after all. And he, Jonas, would never have done it, never have requested release, no matter how difficult his training became. The giver needed a successor, and he had been chosen. A thought occurred to Jonas. Rosemary had been released very early in her training. What if something happened to him, Jonas? He had a whole year's worth of memories now. Give her, he asked. I can't request release, I know that. But what if something happened, an accident? What if I fell into the river like the little four Caleb did? Well, that doesn't make sense because I'm a good swimmer, but what if I couldn't swim and fell into the river and was lost? There wouldn't be any receiver, but you would already have given away an awful lot of important memories, so even though they would select a new receiver, the memories would be gone except for the shreds that you've left them. And then what if... He started to laugh suddenly. I sound like my sister Lily, he said, amused at himself. The giver looked at him gravely. You just stay away from the river, my friend, he said. The community lost Rosemary after five weeks, and it was a disaster for them. I don't know what the community would do if they lost you. Why was it a disaster? I think I mentioned to you once, the giver reminded him, that when she was gone, the memories came back to the people. If you were to be lost in the river, Jonas, your memories would not be lost with you. Memories are forever. Rosemary had only these those five weeks worth, and most of them were good ones. But there were those few terrible memories, the ones that had overwhelmed her. For a while, they overwhelmed the community. All those feelings. You never experienced that before. I was so devastated by my own grief at her loss and my own feeling of failure that I didn't even try to help them through it. I was angry, too. The giver was quiet for a moment, obviously thinking. You know, he said finally, if they lost you with all the training you've had now, they'd have all those memories again themselves. Jonas made a face. They'd hate that. They certainly would. They wouldn't know how to deal with it all. The only way I deal with it is by having you there to help me, Jonas pointed out with a sigh. The giver nodded. I suppose, he said slowly, that I could. You could what? The giver was still deep in thought. After a moment, he said, if you floated off in the river, I suppose I could help the whole community the way I've helped you. It's an interesting concept. I need to think about it some more. Maybe we'll talk, it, talk about it again sometime, but not now. I'm glad you're a good swimmer, Jonas, but stay away from the river. He laughed a little, but the laughter was not lighthearted. His thoughts seemed to be elsewhere, and his eyes were very troubled.